Hi, my name is Andy Gleason with the Franklin team with eXp Realty here in Houston. And today I want to talk to you about seller temporary leasebacks. A seller temporary leaseback is simply an agreement or a contract between the current homeowner and the buyer, the purchaser that's, that's buying that house. Uh, it allows the current seller or the current occupant of the house to stay there temporarily even after closing. So post-closing occupancy is another way to term it. Uh, th th there's a contract in place. Uh, depending on the buyer's mortgage uh, requirements, usually the maximum term is around 60 days. Uh, so you could close on your home and, and be given the opportunity to stay in that house for up to 60 days. Um, there, there's a written agreement in place, obviously. There is a security deposit that, uh, that's given to the, the new buyer or the new owner of the house so they're, to protect against any damages. Uh, and then the daily rate or the amount that you pay is negotiable. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. So first, let me explain the benefits and risks from a seller's perspective or from a from an owner's perspective when they're selling the house to taking advantage of a, a, a seller temporary lease back like this. Uh, some of the benefits are that you've got the flexibility in moving. M one of our biggest concerns is that uh, a home seller is making plans for their move and trying to time things out just perfectly, which is really, really challenging to do. Um, closing dates can move around. Mortgage companies can be delayed. So if you're planning on closing on a certain date, there's a good chance that it maybe doesn't close that day. Maybe it takes an additional few days or an additional week before you can actually close. Having a seller temporary lease back like this in place allows you to stay in the house until after closing. So you don't have to worry about that. If there's some sort of delay with the closing, that's fine. You're not moving out anyway. So you can make plans and have that extra flexibility. It also prevents you from having to be concerned about finding a new house and being in that new house and trying to close you know, simultaneously, which is tough to do. Um, timing is a big deal. Knowing that you're closed and you've got your money in the bank is a huge deal before you move. And then having that flexibility. Some of the risks from a seller's perspective, uh, you know, I mentioned a minute ago that there's a security deposit that you've got to give to the new, the new owner or to the buyer of the house. Uh, one of the risks might be that you're concerned that the buyer might nitpick you on little repairs or uh, not give you your full security deposit back. Documenting everything, taking photos of the condition of the home when you sell it, making sure that there's a written inventory form so that everybody understands if there's a, a nick here or a nick there, they purchased the house that way. It's not something you caused while you were there as a tenant. It's very important. So just making sure to document everything and it'll be fine. Okay, so let's look at this more from a buyer perspective now. Some of the benefits and risks of, of having a, a seller temporary lease back or offering a seller, seller temporary lease back. One of the benefits is that it could really strengthen your offer. It's a very competitive market, as we all know. Uh, throughout the nation, not just here in Houston, but it's very competitive and it's tough for buyers to even get their offers accepted. Allowing a seller or the current owner of the home that extra time and that flexibility. And oftentimes we see, we see buyers offer free leasebacks where they'll let the home seller stay there for up to two months and not charge them anything. Uh, that's one of the big benefits is it really strengthens your offer uh, as a buyer. Uh, one of the other things is maybe you're in a lease that, uh, that your lease doesn't end for a couple of months. If that's the case, allowing the closing to happen and letting the seller stay there for a couple of months, paying you rent would allow you to kind of finish the terms of your lease before you have to move into the new home. Some of the risks that you have to consider as a buyer or, or a landlord in this case, where you're allowing a seller to lease back from you after closing, uh, might be damages caused or repairs that might come up during that lease back period. Clear communication, documenting everything, having photographs of the condition of the home when you purchase it, those are all really important things and making sure that there are no questions on uh, something that might have been caused accidentally by the, the homeowner while they're still living there uh, or during the, the lease back period. So documenting it all, we have plenty of uh, contract addenda that we use to, to make sure that uh, there's checklists and things with the condition of the homes to, to protect you from things like that. Thanks so much for listening to me today. Again, my name is Andy Gleason with the Franklin team here in Houston. Our information is here on the screen. So if we can help you buy or sell a house, you have any questions about the real estate industry, just give us a call anytime.